Welcome to the Product Boss Podcast, where we help product-based businesses grow their sales and improve their strategies. Hey, everyone. I want to introduce you to my co-host and biz bestie, Mina kunlo an Amazon guru that has built a multi-six-figure product-based business. And introducing the other half of the Product Boss, Jacqueline Snyder. She has helped launch and grow over 500 fashion apparel and accessory brands, even one of her own. And together, we share our inventory of secret weapons that will help you dig deep and do the work it takes. Are you ready? Let's build together. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Product Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Jacqueline Snyder, with my lovely co-host and live co-host, because we are going Facebook Live for the first time and recording this podcast, Mina kunlo Tap. Hey, Mina. Hey, Jacqueline. So if you're watching this live, you see that we have a super special, extra special guest. We have Tiffany Lee Bymaster, also known as Coach Glitter, joining us. Hey, Tiffany and Coach Glitter. <laughs> Hi. So nice to be here. Thanks for having me on. We're so excited. Um, so just everyone bear with us because in part of this video series that we're presenting to you, we are also going through it with you. So we're going through these learning curves. Um, and the more we learn and we, uh, we explore, we're able to basically coach you and help you through it. So welcome to yeah, the live. We're stepping outside of our comfort zone. That's for sure. And it's kind of a summer fun thing. I like to have a big crazy goal. <laughs> Video doesn't seem that crazy, but it is. So we're stepping out of our comfort zone and doing a live broadcast. So super exciting. So Coach Glitter, tell us a little bit about you. Like how, how did you become Coach Glitter? Oh my gosh. It was just kind of a random name that I picked a long, long time ago when I first started online without any of the intentions of starting a business at first. It was just Back, you know, eight, nine years ago when MySpace was just starting and then Twitter got really big, people didn't really use their actual names back then. We were so scared that people would like find us and come stalk us in our home. So people used avatars. Nowadays, we're like, please come find us and know who we are and say hello at the grocery store. It's very different um, world today than when I first started just Um, playing, dabbling online. And so it just made sense with what I was doing at the time. I've been a professional makeup artist, a wardrobe stylist, and set designer for, I'm so bad at math. It's like 18, 19, 20 years. We've lost count. A really, really long time. So it made sense with what I was doing full-time at back then. Um, In that time, online marketing, social media, all of the opportunities that I had just watched and observed many of my high profile celebrity clients who had offline businesses bring their persona, bring and create brands from scratch. We didn't even have the word personal branding until a few years ago. Um, It was something, but it didn't have a definition or a name. There were no influencers. That wasn't even a thing back then too. And if you look far, you know, just a few years back, YouTube wasn't even that big of a thing where literally Justin Bieber's of the world now exist because of YouTube. So all of the opportunities business-wise, social media marketing-wise, and all of the different ways that people are creating businesses from blogs who are now becoming number one New York Times bestsellers and clothing lines that now exist. I mean, every aspect of business, whether it's physical products, personal brands, influencers, bloggers, writers, speakers, It all exists now because of social media marketing. And so I observed that working behind the scenes, working with a lot of these big names and companies, doing styling, working on set. I started off in film way back when I first started. Then I moved to television. And at the same time that television was changing with um, all of the reality shows was around the same time that simultaneously online, MySpace was being born. And, and then Twitter, and then this thing called Facebook. So all of this was happening within like a three, four year space. And I got really tired of working 12, 14, 16 hour days on set and found some more local jobs. Reality shows really changed for me. Name a bad reality show. I have worked on it. <laughs> and um, at the same time, I was looking at all these people 
just where I live in Orange County, California, where that's where the Housewives was born. I worked on that show with multiple people behind the scenes. And then I started getting to work with some fitness people that took their fitness brands, became huge on infomercials, sold their products, sold their company to then create a personal brand. And I've been with some of these people 14, 15 years. And then one day I said, I'm not going to be just the person behind the scenes. I think I have something to share and say. And so I did that scary, brave thing. And then I started to explore. I got out of my comfort zone from being the person that was always behind the scenes. And, and instead of just picking up the brush and doing everyone else's makeup and making everyone else look amazing or creating those really beautiful sets that are all smoke and mirrors, by the way, if you saw the whole thing, it's just a bunch of smoke and mirrors, but doing all the things that I've been doing forever and bringing it slowly to the online space, experimenting, figuring out like, how can I make a little spot in the space for myself? And then allowing a little bit of that magic to happen, which is what happens when you put your fears aside. And I, I've been in the online space building my business for just four years this month. And in that time, like my entire life business, everything has changed. And it really changed two years ago. And the reason why you guys are doing this live video is because you know I'm all about video, especially live video. When I first started doing um, Periscope, when that first came out, that platform, it completely, I'd never been on camera. There's no videos of me prior to that. There's lots of photos, mostly product photos. You never saw me. I was a personal brand ish. Like you every now and then would maybe see a hand like this hand's been photographed so many times doing makeup, but you never saw me and I liked it that way. And it's uncomfortable for me to put myself in the camera still. But the reason why I do it is because I know I can reach more people, help more people, serve more of the right people. They get to know me, like me, trust me factor. That's who we do business with because of video. I mean, you can write blogs all day long. I started off as a blogger five, six years ago, at least back on MySpace, my blog was born. So people will gravitate towards you. They will figure out who you are. They will figure out they like you or they don't like you so much faster, lightning years faster than doing it with just the traditional written form or just Instagramming photos alone and not adding that really essential video mix into what you're creating as far as content and sharing and teaching in the online space. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I love about video is that you know how they say there's like seven touch points before someone makes you get the sale. Well, yeah. video leaps over five of those and then you only have Absolutely. to touch it like twice, you know. That's so. been my experience. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We were just talking about also how email marketing campaigns, if there's a video in your email, they're more likely to be engaged with and read than, you know, how we just kind of like, you see all the text and you <laughs> yeah. close it. Right. You kind of scan and now we kind of know to put like the bullet Shortcut. points in the PS, yeah. um, because most people don't read, they yeah. don't read, but they will watch and they will buy based on what they see in a video versus just a written form or just a photo alone. Yeah. yeah. I, I love video. Like I'd rather just get on and talk to somebody straight face to face than typing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's so funny how social media has evolved so much that, you know, back when you probably picked out coach glitter, it was probably like football QD 24. You know? yes. <laughs> Everybody had that, that name. <laughs> yeah. And now it's like um, Disney collector and things like that. They really have built an empire based mm -hmm. on, you know, their name that they chose out back when MySpace was coming right. into play. So really cool. So we wanted um, our listeners to just get the most they could out of coach glitter and, you know, that experience of working with you and so many of our listeners and people in our masterminds and our group coaching programs ask us, how do we use video for our product based business? So, um, several of them are becoming the faces of their brand. They're photographing themselves, holding the product. Um, one of our viewers right now, so shout out to Veronica from vintage meat modern. She actually, uh, does lives and she sells her product every Wednesday. If you're part of her VIP group, you actually get to go on and see what she's selling, but people know, like, and trust her. And she's established that over the years. So, um, we really wanted to talk about how our listeners could become the face of their brand and how to really set that brand up and how does how to be able to sell their brand through Facebook and Facebook lives. That's such a great question. And this is really, it's 
using video to promote and create engagement and awareness, it's really about creating awareness. And we can't lead with the sale, regardless if you're a personal brand or a product, doesn't matter. We have to really show up to serve, to teach, to create engaging content without leading with the sale first. And a lot of people get that wrong. They go straight to the online space and the first thing they do is pitch. And I don't know about you, but most people don't like that. <laughs> they don't know who you are. And yes, you can do it in a way where you are. I mean, I sell all the time, but people don't feel like I'm that kind of salesperson. And I have not, I love sales. There's nothing wrong with sales, but there is a way to do it where you're really engaging with your audience. You're serving first, you're teaching. I think one of the best ways that anybody, regardless if they're a personal brand or they have physical products, learn from QVC because QVC sells 24 seven. I've worked behind the scenes at QVC with my clients. And the beautiful thing about QVC is that they don't do that icky sales. We don't want to be that icky salesperson. We want to be the person that's like, this is something that you need in your life because X, Y, Z, what are the benefits? What are the features? If you study QVC, they're going to talk about this is the most amazing phone cover. It is going to change your life. How many times have you dropped your phone and that's a thousand dollar phone and for just $50, you're going to have peace of mind. You want to talk about the feelings. It's not about the case. It's how it's going to make your viewer, your audience need this in their life so that they immediately are like, I can't live without this thing because I need this for at least three reasons in my life. It's pretty, it's functional. It's going to protect my investment that I've already spent this much money on, on my phone. So why wouldn't I have that pretty case? Or why do I need another handbag? Well, this handbag is different than all the others because it's lightweight and it'll hold all of the things that you have to carry around throughout the day. So you need to talk to your audience without directly pitching, but you're really really showcasing the features of what what's involved in the product but more importantly the benefits to them why do they need this how is it going to change their life how is it going to make them feel how are they going to feel if they don't have it right now and the way that you do that the best way to do that so much faster than anything else is through video so you're doing demos you're showing you can show so much faster through a video than you can written even if it's a blog and it's a beautiful blog with detailed photos it takes a lot of work to do that and i think when we learn how to become great content creators when we learn how to create great engaging conversations with our audience if you are a product creator or a creator of any type to kind of put yourself in front of the camera every now and then so they can see who is creating this. So they get a little sneak peek into the process and make them a process of what it's like. People love sneak peek behind the scenes processes of how something goes from just an idea to an actual finished product. Show them the messy middle, show them what it takes, show them like when things don't go right or when you get feedback from your customers. That shows that not only do you listen to your audience, that you're constantly innovating, but that they become a part of the process. And when they become a part of the process, they wanna become a part of your tribe, which is so much bigger than just having a fan who likes your products. They become a part of your tribe who wants all the things that you have to offer them. Absolutely. We are actually launching a group coaching program that we're calling holiday to halo. And the definition of halo is that if they have a positive experience with one item or product in the brand, there's that halo effect where they believe they know, like, and trust you as a brand that they're going to yeah. like everything you show them. Absolutely. Same thing as if you disappoint them, they might, right. they might consider the whole thing. So it sort of reinforces that, that it helps you create a good experience and get to know you personally where they're like, yes, they're rooting for you. Mm -hmm. They're going through production challenges with you. They want you to win, like that Kickstarter to be successful. So I think that's great. It's a huge part of our businesses. And it's, it's a, the way that you do that also is through being vulnerable and doing a little bit of that storytelling so that it's not just product pitch after product pitch, but the difference between people who just pitch their products and the people who create an experience is telling that entire story. Where did you guys come from? Always remember that whether you have a huge audience, 
right now or not, you're in the building stages. We're constantly in the building stages. So we always have to remember that we have new eyeballs looking at our product, looking at ourselves, looking at who we are, what we do, what we create. And you look at all of the content that you create all throughout your social media platforms. It's not just product based. They want to know a little bit more about who you are, especially if you're a personal brand. Um, they want to know, like, you know, we're not just one dimensional creatures. We have so many different facets to who we are. How did we get here? How did you start doing this? Like start sprinkling that in. Everything's an experiment. You don't know, even, especially in the beginning, but even towards where you feel more comfortable and you've been in the online space, you have a business that's established and you're just learning to scale it more. Regardless of where you're at, we're constantly looking to improve our content, to improve the conversations we have. And it really requires every single one of us to be creative, to be able to create stuff that nobody likes, you know, as far as content goes. Not everyone's going to engage and find that that one post that you think was so amazing is the one that ends up being the one that nobody likes, but you thought was everything. And you just don't know until you put it out there. And as personal brands and businesses in the online space, we have to be scientists. We don't know what's going to work until you put it out there. And even if you fail the 80% of the time, you're gonna, your perception of the word failure is going to change because it's all an experiment to me. And when you experiment that much, that often, constantly trying different topics out, learning how to speak to your audience better, those are things that we're not good at in the beginning, but we can learn to become better. If you got 20% wins, that's huge. We would love a 20% conversion rate on anything. So you'll look at how you create content, how you create those conversations, even in the beginning when you feel like, and it's true, nobody's listening because you're building that audience. They don't know who you are yet. They're not going to even respond back when you ask direct questions. You just keep showing up and everybody else, it's easy to show up, but not everybody continues and not everybody finishes. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things where you can't get hung up on the fact that you think that you're repeating yourself all the time because you oh, just yeah. get better at telling your story and not everybody picks up on it the first time. I feel like I'm kind of that way. Even when I'm podcasting, like I've already told this story, but people, uh -huh. you know, they start to love certain stories and you know, they don't pick up on every broadcast, even though you think that they do, you right. know? So I think that's such a great point in that each time you tell a story, you know what resonates, you know what hits really well. And then, you know, 80% of the time it might not, it might not be that great, but you know, picking up 20% every single time is, is a total win. Yeah. And a lot of times our perception is so different than the reality, <laughs> especially with content creation. We think in the beginning, yeah, it's a lot of like expansive experimenting and then you start to hone it in and then you kind of figure out what four or five things do I talk about all the time and even then you're you're going to change as a human being we're constantly evolving we're constantly improving both in our business as well as in our personal and spiritual and just our lives as a, a full round human being so that's going to reflect in your business and the stories that you tell the things that you share that's going to evolve as well and it's a good thing so we're constantly changing so we're never going to be fixated on just a few things Things. that gets boring anyways but the the I think the part that's um, really reassuring is that once you keep doing this like you really put in a solid six months a year I know in the beginning people don't want to hear that but that's the reality how can if everything was that easy and we had overnight success we wouldn't be here talking about it right but it mm -hmm. takes effort again lots of people start very rarely do people even get to the middle let alone even close to the finish line although there really is no finish line. It's just constantly moving every time you get closer to it. And you start embracing that as a positive. But you take those old content pieces, the topics that worked well, and instead of doing a video on it, then you create it and you do it into a blog form or a post form or inspirational saying, you know, quote form. And you mix it up. And even if you did it all the time, you repeated it all the time, the same content, nobody will notice. No one will say anything. You constantly have new eyeballs. And especially on video, you never deliver the same content exactly the same way twice again. And people need to hear the same things. You know, the repetition is how it really soaks in. So do repeat yourself. You get better on camera. Nobody's good in the beginning. So while you are simultaneously becoming a better deliverer, a better speaker, 
you're just more engaging on camera. You learn as you grow your audience, as you get more comments, which in the beginning, you're like, oh my gosh, now I have people watching that freaks you out. And then it's even scarier when you have someone you actually know that freaks you out even more, totally normal. And then you start getting comments and, you, and you're like, should I answer the comments right then and there? Do I wait till the end? Does it trip you up? There's so many little nuances that you don't need to be good at at once, which is another reassuring part that nobody expects perfection, especially with live video. And you learn what your personal style is, like your flow, how you like to do the videos. And then you'll kind of get into your groove and you get better and you get better and you get better. And I've worked with thousands of people who literally started off fearing like it was a real fear like an actual phobia of being on camera and people who were super awkward on camera but they do something like you know i always say start off with really short videos and then move from there like people who dive in and they're just rambling for 30 minutes nobody wants to hear anybody ramble we don't have time but to come in with a topic ahead of time for me the way that i teach video the number one way to show up with confidence is to not wing it. I think people who end up flailing, who have no point, who are just kind of talking about nothing for a really long period of time, that's not engaging. And you wanna be really respectful of your audience's time. That's the number one intention you should be going in with. I wanna be respectful of their time and I want them to be happy that they stopped their scroll, whatever they were doing at that moment, they're really busy, hectic lives. None of us are short of content in our lives, but give them a reason to come back. So give them just one point. You don't have to give them 50 points or write a whole book and explain the whole thing. No, just give them one or two points, stick to that topic, say hello, say goodbye, ask them to comment, regardless of who you are, whether you're as popular as The Rock on Facebook or Instagram, you're gonna get more eyeballs, more viewers on the replay every single time. It doesn't matter who you are. Still to this day, most of us are gonna stop and watch a video, whether it's only 10% of it, 50% of it, or if you're really good, they're gonna watch the vast majority of it. If you are looking at the replay viewers, always speak to them as well as the live. And that's something too that you get better at the more you do it. So first I just need to comment on all that, that I love I know, that I just you love <laughs> No, my, my point is that I love that you love The Rock. Let's just start there. Okay. <laughs> he was the first Facebook live video that I watched. Okay, because I, I love him. Oh, yeah. um, and also being from LA, we would run into him at the gym. So there's that, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, which is a good place to run into him. Then the other thing is, so talking about our listeners and thinking about this, what, a couple of questions. One, time, like time line. So how long do you think their video should be? How often should they do it? And then how do they come up with the content then? Like, would you strategize like once a week and, or, you know, week one, you talk about this week two, you talk about that. How would, how would you tell them to even get started? If you're brand spanking new, this is all new to you. Or if you're now doing live video with intention, whereas before you were just winging it, which to me, there's zero intention behind that or value most of the time. Um, I, the way that I teach to do it, all the students that have gone through it is you can't wing it and it takes time to create content, but it's not taking hours. It's taking about 15 minutes a week. What I call airplane mode, like shut everything down, get rid of the distractions, go into do not disturb, whatever you need to do. You can get more done in 15 minutes of focus time than you can in an hour with tons of distractions. So that's the first thing that I teach. And then what you want to do in that 15 minutes or like even a 20 minute, if you like to do Pomodoro technique, um, same kind of thing. We're a very short period set amount of time with no distractions. You're focusing on one thing. Do a brain dump. Think about all of the things. Like do, if you're really type A, super perfectionist, which a lot of the people I work with are that way, you want to let go of that. And this allows you to do it. A brain dump is simply, simply literally just writing down every single topic idea that comes to your head for that set amount of time. And then you're going to think about what are my, my clients pain points? What are the conversations we had? What are the things they commented previously? Most people don't even ever look back on their content. They've already created to see what worked, what didn't, what resonated, what got the most engagement. They can't even tell you. They're just like constantly worried about creating content, putting more stuff out, new stuff, new stuff. And you don't ever go back to see what already worked. And there's so much gold in that information. So look at what's already worked. How can you tweak it? How can you change it? How can you improve it? You don't have to start from scratch. And then your brain dumps are all of that. It's literally just let all that information out 
we get bogged down with overwhelm, I know and believe, when we don't do this because all those ideas are floating in your head. If you did this every single week, can you imagine how much volume of great content you have at your fingertips? And, and the things you're asking yourself while you're doing this is, what do I want to experiment with? What do I want to try? What has my audience been asking me for? What am I creating right now that I want to show them a sneak peek on? What am I doing? Where am I going? Is that interesting? How can I make them a part of the experience of what I'm doing? And so there's lots of different types of videos. You can teach, you can demo, you can take them shopping with you for for materials, um, you can do walk and talk. You just have to be careful with like live videos in public spaces because um, you want to make sure that it's not a crazy experience for them where you know you have a shaky camera or maybe you don't care and you're big and bold and you're like, I'm just gonna use a selfie camera or a selfie tripod so that it's not shaky for them. You have great Wi-Fi connection and you have your earbuds in because if there's any amount of noise around you, like at a public place, a shopping place, then all that gets filtered into the speakers on your phone. And it's really loud. They can't hear you. And if it's annoying, they're not going to stay on. So lots of different ways to like figure out what's happening in your week. What can you share? And in the beginning, your goal is to go for repetition and frequency because it's more about practice time for you. It's practice to get over your nerve. It's practice for you to just figure out how all the buttons work like you guys were doing before we jumped on. It's a new way. To, there's so many ways to do live videos. So it's like learning to do the processes. Like you guys don't even know there's so many functions on the platform you're using right now. It's a third party platform, but I always tell people don't start there. Don't get fancy before you have the foundation, build your foundation, the basics, you know, get that really strong first, just use your phone and it's a process. Sometimes you're going to, your Wi-Fi is going to drop. Sometimes your connection is not going to be great. Sometimes your kids and your dogs and your pets will come in and interrupt or your husband. That's okay. You're going to learn how to deal with all those things because that's real life. And that's what we love about live versus a recorded video, which does great too, but the realness, the the organic feel of live videos is what makes it so special. So you're going to just do a brain dump, look at the topics and then look at, take a step back when that 15 or 20 minutes is up, take a step back and look at all the different things that came out of your brain. You will surprise yourself every time brain dumping, brainstorming, whatever you want to call it is a skill. That is a skill that will strengthen over time. The more you do it with repetition, I have my students do it every single week. Keep your old brain dumps, keep it in a folder, take photos of it, keep it on your phone. As you do it, more ideas will just birth more ideas. And so if you've never done it, you're not going to be great at it. Just like video, if never done brain dumps, you're going to finally release all this information and you're going to become so good at it that it gets even faster. I do it every single week. I've been doing this for two and a half years and I always look at my old stuff. I look at my new stuff. There's a lot of crossover, but there's beautiful ideas that are born every single week. Think about the pain points of your clients. What do they need when, I mean, essentially what we do as entrepreneurs, we can recognize, we can see things that other people don't see. We see problems, but they're not problems to us. They're opportunities They're opportunities for us to come up with the solution. And it doesn't have to be like crazy life-changing um, necessarily like life-saving types of things. It could be as simple as moms, you're busy, or are you constantly dealing with, milk spilling in your purse, like give them little tips, something that enhances your audience's life. It doesn't have to be 900 tips. Start with one, but the intention in the beginning is to go for repetition. There's something magical that happens with five videos. If you've never done it, if you've never done more than one with an intention, go for five as close as you can, not in a day. You want to space it out in a week, but consecutive days as close as possible, like five within seven days, five within 10 days, plan it out. If you leave it for chance, it doesn't happen. We know that's just life. So do that brain dump, whatever day is good for you. I like to do it on Sundays. That way I hit the ground running on Monday morning. And again, makes me mentally feel so much more prepared, less overwhelmed. I have a plan of action. I know what I'm doing during the week. Um, I know like where I need to be, who I'm speaking to, where I can space in that video time and don't leave it up for chance and leave your videos really short in the beginning, like five minutes. Because in the beginning, especially unless you have a huge audience built in, then you're going to have engagement. You're going to have people speaking to you, not your entire audience, but some of them as they're like, oh, she's doing video now, or they'll come back. But if you are starting from pretty much zero, you're going to have very little engagement, which is normal. Don't think it's you or it's weird. That's just how it works. We have to build that, that 
engagement. We have to build the audience to come back. We have to let them know that we're even doing this. But the beautiful thing is while we are building that engagement with the audience and building more eyeballs to come and watch our videos and they're subscribing to our pages or, you know, following us on Instagram and doing Instagram live, that's a huge thing now too, or even YouTube live, wherever the heck you're doing it. We have to become known for something first. But in that process, when we're new, we're brand new, that is when it's great to have very little audience, if not zero audience, because we need to get better on camera. Most people are terrible. So get less terrible. <laughs> get less terrible every single time. Oh, I love that so much. Get less terrible. Yeah. It <laughs> seems so much more approachable. Um, I had heard you say that entrepreneur years are like dog years. And I think that's the way it was with video because you practice it and then it goes so fast. You get so much yeah. better at it, it so quickly. So and then it doesn't seem so, so scary. <laughs> yeah. And I think most like, here's the thing, whatever you do in your business, we all in the beginning, feel like we have to show up a certain way. We have to be so perfect. And we, we have to like show up with like that Instagram quality life or the magazine quality photos or, and the thing is I love like in the last six, six months or so, how people are being more real about sharing more of what it's really like behind the scenes. And not only does that resonate, it really inspires people. Because if you're like, I'm perfect, and I just wake up like this, you're like, no, that's not true. From the waist <laughs> down, I'm usually in my pajamas, I'm super comfortable. Yes, I like to show up a certain way, you don't have to. But if it only takes you five minutes to show up on camera and feel more confident, for me, everything's about confidence. If Whatever it takes for you. If you're like, I'm fully confident with a dirty top knot and in a sweatshirt, good, do that. But if, if it makes you feel more confident to show up and put five minutes and you know put your face on, then do that. But when we have confidence, we are willing to get out of our comfort zones and try different things. And that's where the magic happens because whatever you're doing now, is it working great for you? Is it not? Hate to get all Dr. Phil on you, but it's true. Like, is that working for you? How's that working for you? And you kind of have to recognize that. And in business, regardless of what we do, there is so much mindset and personal development that's going to happen, whether we like it or not. And so many of those negative stories that we say that we're not good on camera, I don't look on good, I don't look great on camera, I can't speak great, I hate how I sound, all the things I've heard of a million times. Those are just stories that you tell to yourself that's not true, that nobody else notices, that's just keeping you small and keeping your game small and keeping you from doing the things that are going to be the biggest things, the biggest game changers for your business. Who has heard that video is key to growing your brand? If a video is included in your email, your click-through rates skyrocket. But video is also uber effective when used on your landing page, as a hero video, and obviously on all social media platforms. Our listeners have been asking us how to use video to build their brand and become more profitable. And the answer is Creative Pencil Studio. Have you ever seen those videos where stationary objects seem to be magically moving around on their own? Well, that is stop motion animation. Creative Pencil Studio specializes in it. They love mixing physical objects with digital graphics. So amazing, in fact, that Mina and I are hiring them to do a video for each of our businesses. So make sure to check out the link to our Facebook page for a peek behind the scenes. So Creative Pencil Studio is offering our listeners a free video branding book, storyboarding template, and a free video branding strategy session. Head over to www.creativepencilstudio.com. Okay, so why Facebook? So how do they choose where to go live? That's a great question. So some of you guys might have bigger audience right now on Instagram or Facebook. I don't do YouTube, but a lot of people obviously have created amazing brands on YouTube. You really need to look at where is your audience? What is my product? And where do they live? Where do they go to find what I have to offer? And so that's the number one question you should be asking yourself. So if your audience is really young, they may not be on Facebook as much as they are on Snapchat or Instagram. If you're a brand that, that answers that question, how to do something, where do you go? If you want to learn how to do anything, probably YouTube. So you need to look at your platforms that way. A secondary thing that you want to ask yourself is where can I get the most bang for my buck? For me, it's it's Facebook. A lot of people would assume it's Instagram. I have a bigger audience on Instagram, but my business thrives and has more just business-wise, not popularity-wise, 
But business wise, I have more opportunities on Facebook. I can create bigger, better ads. I can create audiences with my video views. So for those of you, regardless of how big or small your audience is, one of the things when you get into paid advertisement is I need to target the right people. Where are they? There's far more people on Facebook than there are on Instagram. Far more. It's the biggest platform. So whether they're there all the time, they're there some of the time. They have accounts. And so we can niche down, niche down, however you want to say it. <laughs> and you can find your audiences. And for me, putting more effort into video on Facebook has really paid off literally because my ads run so much more profitably for lower costs because of the work that I do. Ask any Facebook ads manager out there, any Facebook ads guru. They're like, it's challenging to find your audiences out there to figure out who you're, who are you supposed to target? Where are they? And the better targeting you do with your ads, your conversion rates are going to come down. You're going to have better um, performing ads. Facebook's going to like it more. They're going to reward you and your costs are going to go down. And for me, the number one resource for that was building audiences with live video because if someone just watches your video as little as three seconds, not the most targeted person, but better than just going, I think my person likes pink and sparkle. That's very vague. You know, somebody who shares that kind of information on Facebook versus someone who actually watched your video. Number one, they're not ice cold meaning they've, n they've never seen your stuff. They have never heard about your brand or your products. They're even a little bit lukewarm. If you can get a bigger audience, even slightly lukewarm, they've seen your stuff fly across the newsfeed. That's what reach means. That doesn't mean they engage with you, but you showed up somehow in their newsfeed. That's not hugely telling. I was looking at engagement. The people that did something, took some kind of action. They liked, they watched, they commented, or the best one of all, they shared your content. That's what we want to do. We really want to look at engagement. And so whether it's Instagram or Facebook, that's what we're striving to do. So you, it's experimenting. It's different for everybody. You're going to kind of pick and choose. But I think in order to become closer to mastery with social media marketing, you can't be everywhere. Especially if you're running your business as a solopreneur, you don't have a team yet. You don't even have a VA part-time. Once you get there, then yeah, you can have them help you a little bit with it. But I don't think you should be everywhere. I think people who say that, that's terrible advice. And it's just going to make you feel like I do nothing well, but I'm everywhere and I feel overwhelmed. So for me, I say pick two. Prioritize two of your platforms. And for me, it's like 60% Facebook, 40% Instagram. But you know what? In the last couple of weeks, because I've been challenged by a friend who was an Instagram guru, she's like, you have a lot of potential on Instagram as well. So I'm putting a little bit more intention into Instagram. So we have seasons, test it out. What's the worst that could happen? You can discover that there is lost opportunity that I didn't look at in the Instagram land versus Facebook. And then maybe you get a little bit of bored, you know, bored. So you go back to Facebook. But regardless of what you do, don't ghost. You can't ghost on your audience. You've got to be consistent. Just like with your podcast. You guys know there's a lot of people who start podcasts, but they don't stay consistent. I forget what the percentages are, but very few people reach 100 podcasts. But yeah, it's really low. Yeah, you want everyone starts though, right? It seems like podcasting is the big thing. And people ask me, are you going to start a podcast? I'm like, I'm laser focused on what I'm doing <laughs> and what I'm working. I love being a guest on the right podcast shows, but I'm focused on what I'm doing right now and still honing in on that. So you have to be able to not be like squirrel and sparkly objects and really focus for a season. A season might mean a quarter for you, might mean a year for you. And don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Do what feels right. Do what you know feels good with your business and you're seeing results. But results never happen overnight. I'm sure as a podcast um, business that you guys didn't see tons of downloads in the beginning. Nobody does unless you're Oprah and just decide to repurpose your podcast overnight. That's different. For the rest of us, regardless of what platform and what medium we use, it takes time and consistency and show up and let your audience know every single Tuesday or whatever day I'm doing a live video or every single whatever day my podcast drops, you know? So it's so important to be consistent and to be reliable to your audience. Yeah, I love that. Just to clarify for our audience, I want to reiterate what you said. So basically focusing on the right platforms. And then what Tiffany does is she actually will take the data 
and uh, retarget with ads. So basically she's repurposing into an ad. So monetizing it that way because she's warming up those audiences with the free lives, kind of the organic reach, right? Yeah, you can do, I mean, saying that. You can create organic audiences for anything, for your upcoming launches, uh-huh. for retargeting purposes, for all kinds of things. Yeah. But it's far more effective when you have a warm audience. So basically taking yes. that data. So and- much more. <laughs> your costs then- will go down. Like my costs for my ads, even for my launches are crazy. And it's because of video. Yeah, for sure. So just taking that data and then repurposing it in a way that you're using it for if it's Facebook ads, or it could be Instagram ads, like in your case, or whichever platform that they do so choose, you know, and um, it's just so smart. I love that. Yeah, both work really well for me. And I I have different audiences on Instagram than I do on Facebook. I have a slightly older audience on Facebook, but they need my stuff too. I have a slightly younger audience on on Instagram, but they need my stuff too. So I speak differently to those audiences slightly, but that took time for me to, to know and get to know them as much as they had to get to know me. So when you mentioned launches, so this is just a really good point. If you've talked about, we've heard you speak live mm-hmm. and you've talked about launches and this like to lead up to launches and to do yeah. live videos. So let's think about that as like a product. So either if someone's launching seasonally, so they're launching a clothing line, they're launching a new flavor, um, there's a launch or they're a brand new brand and they're sort of like, we work with a lot of people that are new brands are building their websites really. And their products not even launched yet. So and that they is should, the form of a launch as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like the grand launch, like the launch, mm-hmm. right? So, um, how could they lead up to that launch using video? I love that question. Using everything that you have at your fingertips, posts, blogs, homing pigeon, skywriting, whatever you can do, <laughs> do it early. That's my number one tip. Do not say I'm having grand opening tomorrow. Nobody cares. You have to like build, you have to build the, um, the, the audience to get really excited. Just like a movie. We often see movie trailers a year at the movies before they're even out. You're like, Oh my gosh, that was so amazing. I'm so intrigued. And you're like, <laughs> 2019, I had a week until then. You're like, yeah. How I feel about Game of Thrones. Yeah, you're like, what is the next season? What's happening? Why are they on hiatus? You kind of want them to feel that way. Teasers, tease the heck out of what it is that you're opening, whether it's a brand new website. Show little pieces of it. Don't give it away. Curiosity marketing is one of my favorite things. No matter what it is that you do, create that intrigue. Have them ask you for the information. When's this coming out? You keep talking about it. I call it sprinkling it in. It's all curiosity marketing. So how can you get them intrigued? How can you get them to ask you, when's this happening? Give me more. Give me more information. Why are you doing this to us? Like That's a good response. So if you're launching a new clothing line, show the fabrics, show the sketches, show the process, but don't say what it is. Or like even have them become a part of the process of naming. If you like name your clothing lines or name the seasons, or if you have beauty products, name them, have contests, do giveaways, do whatever you can to get, you know, right into the eyeballs and get your audience to know that something's happening. It's exciting. It's intriguing. They want to learn more. So stay tuned. And that happens. It's the ramp up. The longer your runway is for any kind of launch, whether it's a website opening, a a grand opening for a a physical brick and mortar store, it doesn't matter what it is. Get that intrigue started. Get the curiosity going. Let them know something's coming. Look at all of the people in like the big names. They do this whether they have a record that's releasing, a new single that's dropping, um, if they're going to be going on tour, if their show is finally coming back. They're teasing it into all of the promo. It's your. This is how we promo if we're not Justin Timberlake and not singing at the Super Bowl. He promoed the heck out of that, and that led his Super Bowl led to his record dropping and his world tour. It wasn't a coincidence that it was timed that way. And so you got to figure out how can I do that in my own version? And that's how we have podcasts. We want, like I um, talked about when I spoke, there's so many opportunities for all of us when we're not just in Timberlake or we don't have, you know, thousands of dollars. Let's even not even hundreds of dollars to put ourselves out there and promote and use ads, but you can 
do guest appearances on videos. You can do guest appearances on podcasts. You can do guest blog writing. You can team up with your friends out there, collaborate. The more you put yourself out there, like the fact that we even know each other is because we both put ourselves out there. We went to live events, we met each other and that created opportunities that were mutually beneficial. So you got to do more of that. Get your name out there, sprinkle it out early, plan ahead, just like you plan ahead for production times and manufacturing times and creating like the prototype and then go into manufacturing. All that lead time needs to happen also with your launches. I love that. And yeah, and that brain dump, I mean, we talk, we think about what we have to do every day for our business. So think about how that would be interesting for somebody to come along and know like, what your factory looks like, or I just got this, you know, example in the mail shipped from China. And what do you think about it? Right. Yeah. Let them be a process, you know, get their input. I love Instagram stories right now. I'm kind of obsessed with it because it's so easy. It doesn't take a lot of time and you can do some more things on the fly as you develop that rapport with your audience, pull them, ask them. Now they even have that little slider thing. Like, do you love it? Do you hate it? What do you think of it? And it's not just engaging, but it's actual data for you to put into what you're creating, what you're doing, what you're promoting. It's so much great information. It's like having a test market at your fingertips all the time. Yeah. Just being able to engage their customers because we don't have brick and mortars anymore. So you're not actually face to face with your people. Mm -hmm. And the size of limit for online marketing these days. So I feel like it's such a huge opportunity. Yeah. So we are so honored that you oh. came on our podcast. Thank you. Um, again, and it was, we put ourselves out there, um, at the live event that we were at and, um, you were a speaker and we we're like, let's go up and ask her. Cause we think you'd be such a perfect fit for our listeners. And you said, yes. So, um, <laughs> so tell our listeners how they can connect with you. You can find me at my central hub. My website's coachclitter.com. There's a variety of information on there. I'm really a a lifestyle personal brand. So you get a little bit of everything there's you'll see there's so little pitching, but that's what I love to put out into the, to the online space. You can find me at coach glitter on Facebook, on Instagram and coach glitter everywhere. So I hope you guys will check it out. And so we'd like to wrap up our interviews with some fun questions. Yeah. All right. So it's going to be sort of like a rapid fire and your answers. So what is your coffee order? Oh, I like to make my coffee at home unless I can find a place that makes bulletproof style coffee, but I don't like the butter. So I just like plain black organic coffee with the bulletproof brain octane oil. And I've been putting coconut oil in mine because we're doing the XCT oil. Yes, but (laughs) the brain octane is different than regular MCT or XCT oil. It's actually very different. I didn't know the difference either. I feel such a big difference with that specific brand and I am not sponsored by them. They they are welcome to sponsor me, but I'm not. (laughs) I'm obsessed. I I think Um, it really makes you smarter. You're right, actually. I think we switched over to that. And Whole Foods is making them now in the coffee section, just as a side note. No. When you're <laughs> it's no really key. hard to find a real, like you You check on Yelp. And I was just in New York a couple of weeks ago. And another friend of mine that's in the mastermind group that I'm in, we we're like searching New York. And sometimes they say they are, we'll go to the coffee shop and they don't make it, but it's no. in, the re- in the review. So in New Jersey, in Whole Foods, they're making it. So they're for sure doing it everywhere else. (laughs) (laughs) It's reached New Jersey. They're reached here in the suburbs. We're good. Okay. What is the favorite thing on your desk? My favorite thing on my desk? I have an award. Or actually, it's right here. I I keep moving it. But I got this award from my mentor, my coach, James Wedmore, at his live event that I really treasure. That's amazing. Congrats. Do you mind sharing? Oh, yeah. It's right here. (laughs) But what was it for? Um, it was at his business by design live event. And it says most value at BBD live 2017. Oh, that's just so good. I gave great feedback. I contributed, which if you guys had known me just a few years ago, I really am the quiet one that likes to prefers to stay behind the camera and not, I'm not shy, but I'm, I'm really the quiet one. So the fact that I even speak up and contribute and when I do, apparently it has merit. <laughs> so it means <laughs> a lot that he gave me that award in front but, of like the whole live event. That's, in, that's incredible. Yeah. So finish this sentence. And I bet I could guess finish the sentence. When I pick up my phone, I check my Instagram, I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> which is funny because Facebook's still my priority, but I check my Instagram right now. Yeah. Um, you wish you knew how to 
oh, I wish I knew how to do my own Facebook ads. <laughs> like a guru. <laughs> that is an expensive thing to outsource, but so worth it. it the ROI is still amazing. Mm-hmm. So what was the last show that you binge watched? I'm not a big TV watcher. Okay. Um, what was Stranger Things? Ooh. Good I watch, I mean, not like, that's why I don't watch TV because I'll get sucked in. I don't, I don't know of any other series, but Stranger Things, I think I watch first and second season. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in a very short, embarrassingly, embarrassingly short period of time. You're like, all of a sudden you're like, how is it one o'clock in the morning and I should be asleep? <laughs> <laughs> the next week? What's yeah. happening? <laughs> I haven't left this house. Um, what should the title on your business card actually say? Oh. That's such a good question. Oh, something along the lines of, oh, I don't know. What should it say? It's constantly changing. It is constantly changing. It could be um, constantly changing. Constantly, like, <laughs> constantly <laughs> evolving, um, changing one business at a time. I don't know, something like that. An evolving human. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> In real time. Okay. And then I think we know this one, but do you have an alter ego or stage persona? I do. It's me, but it's like the the version of me that happens even without, because that sounds like it's contrived, but it's not. I do become a different person on camera or on stage versus who I am when I'm not on camera. And I think a lot of us have that person inside that's dying to get out. It's who we are. It's authentically who we are. It's just that version of us that really shows up despite our fears, knowing that we can help and impact just one person out there. And that's what motivates me. I love that. Oh my gosh. What a great way to end the podcast right there. (laughs) I love that. So thank (laughs) you again for joining us on the product boss podcast. And helping thank us through our you. first Facebook Live. And thank yeah, you to everyone who you. This seems so easy. <laughs> so fun, right? I can tell you guys, most people, we are so creative that all of the scariness that we make up in our head because we are so creative is never how it is in reality. It's that whole perception versus reality thing. And you're like, why didn't I do this before? And I love when people respond that way because you're going to be able to make a greater impact just by doing incorporating video into whatever you're already doing as a part of your overall social media strategy. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining. Great. Thank you, everybody. We'll catch you next time. Bye. Loved this episode of the product boss podcast, head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. We would so appreciate it.